Hey guys, it's been a while, but last week I went to Perth to attend the International Arts Festival and here's how it went. I got to the airport at 4.30 in the morning, took two flights, had literally zero hours of sleep, and finally reached Perth. Greetings from Perth! Perth. This is my roomie. Yeah. Pei Hong, or as I like to call her, Amma. Oh, so the plan for tonight is dinner at the hotel, and then we are going to watch... What are we going to watch? Uh, ballet at the quarry. The Royal what? Ballet at the Quarry. Ballet at the Quarry, which is a theater that was a quarry, but it's now converted to a theater. A quarry amphitheater. That's where we're going. Yeah, so that's cool. It's thirty four degrees, which is it's very hot. I'm surprised because it doesn't feel that way. But we come from the tropics, so what do you expect? <laughs> The amphitheater was on the top of a small hill which had the most gorgeous view and it was evening time so the lights and everything were really pretty. The theater itself, you sat on the grass kind of like a picnic and there were people having champagne, food, it was really bougie and you could actually see the performers rehearsing right before the show. And as I'm speaking to you now, it is literally more than a month since I went on this trip. That's how long it's taken me to get the whole video together but I will be giving some of my thoughts like reflections and reviews on the shows that I went to see because unfortunately you're not allowed to film most live performances I did film myself talking about the shows during the trip um, but I thought I'd add a little bit more commentary now that I have the gift of hindsight so you're gonna hear reviews from past me and current me and yeah to get away past Hannah <laughs> So we went to watch the West Australian Ballet and it was like three mini shows in one. The theme I think for the entire thing was Light and Shadow. First one, the first piece was called Light and Shadow. The second one was something to air do with and air some and other invisible, invisible forces. Other invisible other forces. forces. And then the third one was like some kind of celebration type thing. So, what do you think? I really liked the first piece because it was like a large ensemble and then like they used their bodies to create mm -hmm. like a lot of shapes and stuff and fluid movements yeah it was a lot of like um group movements that was really cool they were like different formations lots of like really interesting lifts um there was like one dancer that kept getting like tossed, tossed around, around by the others it was so cool um and then they kind of like formed a, s a set of stairs with their body and then mm -hmm. she just like walked up and down they and walked up and down, and down <laughs> by backwards like oh yeah backwards they did walk up backwards. i was so impressed <laughs> second one was interesting you hesitated like she said repetitive she fell asleep i i thought it was repetitive because like i was dozing off because i was tired not because it was boring but every time i opened my eyes it was like the same image i felt like it had like a build-up so it started off like quiet and you know like mysterious and then it got really intense like with the music but then i felt after that it didn't like there was no resolution it just kind of plateaued up there it like came up and then And then the third one, I, I really quite like the third one. Um, bad. By a, lot the, of, a lot of things happening at the same time. Yeah, a lot of things happening at the same time. So it kind of did really successfully capture the mood of like celebration and joy and all of that. So yeah, I thought it was cool, but you know, it wasn't as like cool as the first one. I think just because like when we do A-level drama, there was like, there's a lot of like abstract <laughs> theater. So the first one was more like what we're kind of used to or like what more of like what we're interested in more absurd yeah yeah the lighting was really good um oh, the third show they had the, the, the oh yeah there was like one there was one part where um it was just like all the dancers in rows and they just like lifted up their skirts i think it was just female dancers yeah they just lifted, lifted up, up their the skirts, skirts and you could like see their feet and Knees like downwards. yeah it was just like in amber lighting so it was like kind of it was like from the sides too, so it was, it was from, like yeah the front side. Yeah, yeah. the sides, so it was like kind of like silhouette-y. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, that was really cool. Oh yeah, by the way, all the music that they danced to was by Johann Sebastian Bach. Bach. So yeah, we're gonna go down now, and we're yeah, going to go time. to Fremantle. And we have a special friend today that we're gonna carry around like the embarrassing tourists that we are. <laughs> Meet Rue! Hey. Oh no. So creative. <laughs> 
So I hopped on the train to the beautiful harbor town of Fremantle, which was where we spent the entire day. The first place we visited was the Fremantle Jail, which I think is the oldest jail in Western Australia. And it's also apparently haunted, and as someone who loves the supernatural, history, all of that, this place was really fascinating. couple hundred years that the jail has been around, it's had a few reincarnations and they've preserved different parts of the jail from each different era so you can see the history from all the way back to colonial times until the late 90s. And pertaining to the supernatural part, apparently some people feel uneasy or cold spots but personally I didn't experience anything not even in the gallows which is supposedly and most understandably the most haunted place in the jail but there was also lots of beautiful art that was done by the prisoners during their time at the jail and it's actually really impressive what they were able to come up with. Overall a really fascinating experience. some free time to wander around Fremantle and of course my basic ass goes thrift shopping and book shopping as if I don't already own enough books that I haven't read Next, we headed over to the Fremantle State Art Centre to check out a few visual art exhibits there was an exhibit by the Semicolon Project, but there was also an exhibit that used real human heart cells that you could actually see still moving. Others were more Aboriginal influenced and focused more on identity and culture, which I found pretty interesting as a tourist. Then we went to another art exhibit and this one was interesting. I'll just let my past self talk about that. Then the next part is my favorite part because it's also the most like hit scratching thing. It was called something something about a dog and uh, the entire exhibit is dedicated to these kind of paintings and in my opinion That's my opinion Look I get that art is like whatever you want it to be but like I, I, swear, an I swear a seven-year-old could have drawn this. So after I went <laughs> to see this uh, exhibit, I decided to re do a recreation of what I saw. And there this is it. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like, no joke, I'm going to like put a side-by-side -side comparison. And they were like se selling this off as like, legit art. I'm just gonna interrupt myself and say that all forms of art are legit and valid but what I'm referring to here is what makes it better than any other art piece like why does this get a separate exhibit and the recognition that it has over other pieces of art that maybe take a bit more skill and creativity but I digress. And I even read like the little descriptions mm -hmm. There's nothing like symbolic about it, so um, I don't get it, but I guess that goes to show that, you know, art is like just really subjective and it can be whatever you want it to be. What is art? <laughs> Y'all ready for some clownery? So that evening we were supposed to watch a show, which unfortunately got cancelled, but thank god, our flight also got cancelled, so we were able to make it for the Saturday show instead of the Wednesday show, which is supposed to be today in this vlog. So we had some free time and the organizers of the trip did not want to tell us what we were going to do. And upon arriving to the place, I see the sign and I think, oh, we're gonna play laser tag. But it's a freaking trampoline park. And there I am in my dungarees because they did not tell us what we were about to do, hopping around like a damn fool. Do I even have any dignity left at this point? It is the next day and we are paying a visit to the Western Australian Academy of the Performing Arts. We got to tour the campus, see their different facilities, the different performance spaces. 
It was a bit quiet as the students were actually on break at that time But nonetheless, I think it had a lovely atmosphere And if I were to do a degree in the performing arts, I would probably consider going there We also got to look behind the scenes and see things related to set building Prop making, lighting, sound All the technical elements of drama that I'm honestly not really that familiar with I just found it really cool and also was a bit jealous that these students have so many opportunities to perform and just be creative and do what they're good at and from what I was told during the tour you kind of have a lot of liberty over what you want to be involved in and what you want to do and as an aspiring artist I think that's one of the things that I'm looking forward to when I go to university later that day we headed back to the city to visit the Perth Institute of Contemporary Arts this is where we saw the more avant-garde exhibits this one in particular was a film that kept playing on a loop and it was supposed to apparently demonstrate the infinite and unending power of something. It's been a month, give me a break. It's not the type of art that I personally feel connected to but I can appreciate as a fellow creative person. My favorite part of this place was this activity corner called Chalk Talk where you could create like poetry and just play with words that were cut up and in a box and for you to stick on pieces of paper and you can hang it up after you're done. On the other side of the road was the library which I was so fascinated with but we went in to see a historic photograph exhibit. Later that same evening. So we are back in the hotel and Peho just skedaddle. <laughs> You see her carrying the ironing board. That's because uh, we decided we're like not super hungry, so we decided to have uh, like a room picnic. Uh, so we went to Woolworths and we got some food for dinner, and uh, we're just camping out here in the hotel room. And then we were like, oh, I want to eat on the bed, but then we don't have a table. Then she remembered we have an ironing board, so that's like our makeshift table. Let me help. <laughs> have you ever opened an ironing no. board before? Because it's always open at home. Fair enough. This is our lovely setup between our beds. We have the tape, the dining table. <laughs> uh, we asked for some cutlery, and then we have a hunk of bread. I'm having this ancient grain salad thing. Hashtag not sponsored. Some ham, some salad, and peaches. Yes. peaches. And I've got some prosciutto. Yes. I got fancy. Meat. She got fancy meats. Shut up! Don't judge. So. We gon' feast! Haha! We gon' feast. We gon' feast. We gon' feast. Two hours later. Now we get to my favorite performance of the entire trip at the Perth Concert Hall. The interior itself was already impressive. There was a ping pong table, people drinking champagne, the atmosphere was buzzing. I think I looked through the doors and I got an eyegasm. Just how visually stunning and grand it was made me so excited to see the show. I'll talk about the concert in a bit, but after the performance, we actually got to meet Meow Meow, who was the main performer. It was her show, and we were all so excited to go and meet her and get our program signed. <laughs> loved her energy on stage so I was a bit starstruck when I went up to her and actually talked to her and thanked her for an amazing show. She was so lovely and smiley and gosh I was just so starstruck and ah I miss I miss that show. It's the night after Meow Meow which was a show we went to watch at the Perth concert hall and wow <laughs> is all we have to say like we were completely mind blown the set was gorgeous like as soon as we walked into the theater it was like <gasps> breathtaking there were light the lighting was amazing and it was like all fogged up so it created this like really cool atmosphere so the show was kind of like a cabaret um inspired by like the 1920s weimar um germany yeah speak easy kind of thing converting us to communism <laughs> converting us to communism exactly the artist herself um meow, her stage name is meow meow um she came up with like the music she wrote 
all the songs were like written by her and her friends the whole concept and everything was by her it was like there was like comedic bits where she did like little skits and stuff costume changes on stage you know, on stage and uh lots of audience participation but unfortunately we were like up in the stalls so we weren't lucky enough to get chosen <laughs> um oh. even though i really wanted to um all those women on stage were guys and yeah they were guys and yeah it was like really funny because she got them to like dance with her um, <laughs> and it, it was just like a really great time the next day we took a ferry ride across to the perth zoo before but never have I ever seen a python devour an entire chicken. chicken and obviously me being the most touristy tourist tourist there is I had to go and see the koalas the wallabies and the kangaroos then we headed back to the city and paid a visit to the art gallery of Western Australia now I've never really been the type to get visual art like it's just something that's not really in my comprehension but after having a guided tour and having someone explain like the techniques and the what it symbolizes um, it's very much like any other form of art it has a story to it it has history behind it even the more abstract ones that make someone go like well you call this art um, actually have a meaning to it and I found it really interesting to look at art from a different perspective. After our visit to the gallery, we went to Yegan Square where we watched an Aboriginal dance performance. really in touch with her own culture it's very fascinating for me to see people from other cultures celebrate their heritage so right after that we went to see two shows that night first was Colossus and second one was Hofesh in the Yard which I talk about in a second unfortunately I wasn't allowed to film anything so you're just gonna hear my thoughts on the two shows so we went to see Colossus at the Perth State Theatre um, Colossus was a company of 50 dancers and they basically like use their body and breath and sound effects to communicate like the collective um, ideology, how people are like moved by the masses, the power of, you know, numbers. And it was, I, I thought it was pretty amazing, uh, considering that the program stated that they've only been working on this for two weeks. Two weeks! And they created that <laughs> like hour long masterpiece. And I was just thinking, like, our A-level drama, we took six weeks to create, like, a 15-minute thing. What describes this performance best is how simple can be the most effective. A lot of the movements, like, even though there were, like, you know, um, very complex elements of uh, contemporary dance, there was, like, small gestures and small um, sound effects that you just use the human body um, that collectively just like make a part of the bigger picture which i thought was really cool we went to see whole fresh in the yard and it was a mix of hip-hop dance contemporary dance i honestly would be pretentious if i would say like oh yeah i totally got what that was about i the program didn't really explain like what the message behind it was but maybe it wasn't supposed to have a message i don't know what i got from it was i guess like themes of conflict and aggression it was like sectioned into two different performances so the first was a company of seven men and then there was like a company of maybe 10 12 12 people and they were all in like skin tight suits. Don't know what that was about, but um, what what was the purpose of it? What does it mean? What does it all mean? We have come to the last day of the trip. So we said goodbye to the hotel room and for one last look around Perth, we hopped on a boat and went down the Margaret River. Perth really is a beautiful city and there was even a part of the boat that you could go up onto and have like an overview of everything. 
That afternoon we went to see Tower of Glass which was the show that we were supposed to see on the day that we went to the Bounty Park um, but we finally got to see it today. I've never seen a show like this before where it wasn't fiction, it was basically a TED talk by this guy and it was accompanied by different theatrical elements. There was puppetry, there was music, it was all symbolic. What I found really creative was the set of concentric circles from the flies that were lowered and lifted throughout the performance, symbolizing one of the key themes in the play and like, oh, I say play but like I feel really weird calling it a play because it's not like a play. It's like a TED talk that's accompanied by play-like elements. I will say it got a bit sleepy at one point because the dude straight up just lay down to some calming piano music and just lay there for like a good 10 minutes. I had to wake the girl next to me because she was snoring. I guess it goes to show abstract theater, just take a nap in the middle of your performance, why not? Luckily for us, there was some sort of festival slash fair thing happening on the other side. It was sunset and it had the most gorgeous view of the city on the other side. The skyline was something out of a postcard. we have come to our final show which is Hansel and Gretel Opera in the Park. Now Night at the Opera sounds real fancy but the opera is in a park so it was like a Coachella music festival type situation where everyone is just like on the grass. Unfortunately we came a bit late so we had to go sit all the way at the back um, and we could only really see the show through screens and speakers but nonetheless I think it was a really cool experience to have it like in that kind of setting where I wouldn't typically expect an opera to be performed and I'd never seen an opera before so this was pretty interesting. I kind of expected a big lady to appear on stage in a horned helmet but what was unique about this performance was the use of projection and different like lighting effects to add to the scene. That was really interesting and the singing was phenomenal but oh my goodness it was so long and I think we were just tired. It was like the end of a really busy four days. So not my favorite performance, I felt like it went on for a bit too long especially because most of us are familiar with the story of Hansel and Gretel but nonetheless I think the actors did a really good job and their singing was amazing and again just the whole experience of like being out in the park and watching the show was really cool as well. So that's it guys, that was my Perth trip. I hope that you guys found this somewhat entertaining. I just really wanted to kind of review and talk about the shows that I watched because no one else will want to listen to hear me blab on about theater, drama, nerd stuff. Now that the entire world is under lockdown, I feel really, really grateful that I got to go before, you know, all the craziness started happening. And I really hope to visit Perth again one day. I am a city girl at heart and I just love the city itself and all this cultural experience I think really inspired me creatively. Like while I was there when I was watching something and I saw a technique or something that they used during the shows or in the exhibits or whatever, I now want to kind of draw inspiration from that and put it into my own work as an author and aspiring writer. But yes, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.